would be from you and from you alone. I pray, God, that I'd not be seen nor heard, but that you would be seen and heard working through me, that you alone would get all of the honor, glory, credit, and praise. We recognize, Father, that you have all power to do whatever it is you want to do here today. And so we welcome you. We thank you, Father, that you have welcomed us and allowed us to be here today. And in Jesus' name and blood, we rebuke the enemy from trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But I pray, Father, that we hear every word that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. God is good. Amen? amen? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 5, verse 1. That's where we're going to get going this morning. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. If you have a Bible and someone in your row does not, uh, please share with them. If, <clears throat> excuse me, if no one near you has one, the scriptures will be on the screen here in a moment. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. We're going to pick up uh, kind of where we left off last week because the Lord just hasn't released me to move on yet. And so this week, the Lord's just been dealing with me. Uh, the Holy Spirit's been showing me things and scriptures to share with you all. Uh, so we're, we're, we're going to talk yet again this week about even when it doesn't make sense. How many people in your lives have had a moment where it just didn't make sense, right? How many of you have looked at your spouse before and it just didn't make sense, right? I mean, you know, how many of you at your job listened to your boss and it just didn't make sense, right? Or your coworkers, it just didn't make sense. In your own mind, how many of you have done something before your own self and you didn't even know why you did it or said it? It just didn't make sense, man. It just didn't, didn't make sense. Luke chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. You know, isn't the Lord sweet? Can I just put that out there if you didn't already know? I mean, God is just so good and he's faithful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 5, verse 1, the word of God says this, praise the Lord. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him, okay, him is Jesus. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were what, church? And they were washing their nets. Amen. See, to, to a fisherman, the net was his livelihood. He didn't have a net. He wasn't catching fish. I mean, it was his livelihood, and they were expensive. It wasn't like he could just go around buying a net every time one broke every week because in his negligence, he failed to take care of his net. Uh, it was his livelihood. As a fisherman, he was solely responsible of taking care of his net. And after, listen to this, after every use, he would inspect his net and clean it, getting every piece of debris, every plant, every rock, every pebble stone, whatever it was, every piece of trash that may have been hung up in his net, he was responsible of clearing it out. The cleaning of their nets took time and it took plenty of patience. Not only did it take time and patience, but the cleaning of the net always took place when they got back to shore and they were tired many times of their fishing. If the net was not washed and stretched out to dry, it, it would begin to rot and break. So taking care of the net was very, very, very important. How many of you have ever taken a vacation and you had a wonderful time and then you get all the way home and then the real work begins clearing out the vehicle, doesn't it? By show of hands, how many of you have gotten home from a journey and you just sat there exhausted knowing that you had to clear the vehicle out and therefore you didn't even want to clear yourself out of the vehicle? Just, I'm just sitting here, man. If I, The children are asleep. If I could just sit here for five minutes. But then there's that cute little voice that you married that said, I do, that says to you, clean the trunk, I'm going inside. <laughs> <laughs> so it was tough work, right? I mean, it was tough work for the fishermen, uh, not only coming in, whether they had a great day or a great night's catch, uh, they, regardless of whether it was prosperous, beneficial or not, they had to come in and still the work began when the fishing was over. Look at Luke chapter 5 verse 3 please. 
And the word of God says this, praise the Lord. Luke chapter 5, verse 3. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he, Jesus, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And so he's still in shallow water. And he sat down, verse 3, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, Jesus, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took what, church? Is there a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point at the end of that sentence? So basically, what's taking place, look at verse five, look at verse four again. Look at verse four, Luke chapter five, verse four. And when he had finished speaking, Jesus said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And so the sermon is over, at least we think, right? But Jesus is not done working. Yet even in the silence, he's waiting for obedience. Amen? How many of you know you've got to be good even when someone else ain't watching? But God is always watching. Amen? So look at what happens, and he's always working, amen? Look, amen, he's always working, he's always watching, praise the Lord, amen? Verse 4, and when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch, exclamation point coming, verse 5, and Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and we took nothing. What Simon is really saying here is this, Master, we just fished all night, we got nothing, and I just cleaned my net. You understand that? How many of you have told God you didn't want to do something and then you explained to him why you didn't want to do it? I've been there. And everyone else is lying. I don't want to do that. I don't want to call her. I don't want to call him. I don't want to send a card. No one sends me a card. Right? Have you ever whined to God before? I wonder how much whining goes on to God every week from his people. Hey, but yet he is so faithful he does not deserve a single wine to go his direction, does he? I mean, he's so faithful. It, what, 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 what Peter's saying is, hey, we, Simon is saying, we, we've, we've got nothing. I just cleaned my net. I don't want to get my net dirty again because then I'm going to have to clean it all over. I don't want to throw my net out there. We've been there. We've done that. And we didn't have any success at it either, Lord. Have you ever invited someone to church and didn't have any success at it? Raise your hand if you've been there so everybody else can be blessed by your honesty. Just keep it up. Have you ever invited somebody to church? Hands down. Have you, have you ever shared the gospel with someone and they, and they said they didn't want nothing to do with it or didn't accept it? Raise your hand. See, look around. T -t Tell your neighbor, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. All right. How many of you, listen, watch this. How many of you are sitting in this church today because somebody else invited you here? Raise your hand. Okay. So that's over half. Hands down. Thank God someone, I'm thankful, and I thank God that someone didn't give up on you. And Peter says, it's not working. It didn't work. I've been there. I've done that. And if I've got to go do it again, it's going to cause me more work. But listen to this, and I want you to think about this. I charge you with this today. If, if Simon had known the reward would be great, he would not have cared about having to re-clean his net, would he have? If he had known the reward was going to be great, he would not have worried about recleaning his net. And so what I'd like to charge you with this morning is don't give up. Because the reward that hangs in the balance is the soul of a man and woman. The reward is great. The kingdom of God is at hand. You understand? The kingdom of God is at hand. Every day, the kingdom of God is at hand. Every day, people die. Every day. Every day that we wake up, there's a chance. There's a chance that on that day, it just may be the day that the Lord Jesus Christ hears from his Holy Father, go get your bride. Go get the church. And we don't know if today's the day. The kingdom of God is at hand, church. And so when the Holy Spirit unctions us in whatever way and leads us to minister to someone or to love someone or to share with someone,
far be it from us as ambassadors of Jesus Christ to say, been there, done that, I'm tired. Don't want to do with that work today. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. So in the first half of verse 5, Simon gives Jesus a little lip. You know what I mean when it says give him some lip? But Lord, we've done that! But then something amazing takes place in the end of the fifth verse, and we can't move forward in this until we go there first. Look at verse 5, please. Luke chapter 5, verse 5. <clears throat> Praise God, the word of the Lord says, And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night long, and we took nothing. Here's one of the most greatest buts in the Bible. What are the next four words, church? Read it on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Out loud, go. But at, but at your word. One of the most greatest buts in all of mankind. Could you get any greater obedience than that right there? But at your word. Isn't that all that matters? Not his feelings, not his emotions. Not what he knew about fishing. They had been there toiling all night long. Now the heat of the sun is coming. And he's like, hey, we didn't catch nothing last night. Surely we're not about to catch nothing now. Last night was the prime time. Surely we're not going to catch nothing now. But at your word. Even when it didn't make sense, he trusted the Lord. For us, for us, for us. Even when it doesn't make sense, we trust who? The Lord. Look at what he says again in verse 5. And Simon answered, and Simon answered Jesus and he said, Master, we, we toiled all night long and we took nothing but at your word. What's he then say? I will. I will. But at your word, I will. Amen? Everybody just say, I will. I will. Say it again. Say it again. Isn't it hard to do that sometimes? You ever had somebody come to you and say, hey, will you do me a favor? And before you say, I will, you say, depends on what it is. <laughs> Don't know yet. Can't commit to that. His faith was right right here. He says, but at your word. I will, but at your word, I will. Look at it again, verse 5, and Simon answered, Master, to Jesus, he said, Master, we toiled all night, and we took nothing. You know what I get from that is? Even in your obedience, there's times where you still have to fight off excuses. Amen? Even in your obedience in the spirit, you're still going to fight the flesh. Amen? It's not easy all the time, is it, church? It's not easy all the time, is it, church? I mean, listen, there may be someone here that's struggling with that. It's not easy all the time, is it, church? No. no. And if anyone ever told you it would be, then they lied to you, and you've been deceived, and now you need to understand that you need to fight for what's right. So he says in verse 5, And Simon answered, Master, we told all night, and we took nothing, but at your word I will let down. The nets. This is the beauty of the end of verse 5. This is the beauty of it. Lord, even when I don't understand it, I trust you. Lord, even when I can't make sense of it, I trust you. Lord, even when I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm trusting you. I would amazing faith. Everybody in here has the ability to have that kind of faith. We're just trusting in the Lord. Amen? God, I read that, I understand that that's for me, and I'm going to apply it in my life. And even though I can't make full sense of it, what I can make sense of is that my faith is solely in you. You understand? And that's a decision, that's a mental breakthrough that must take place. Okay? That, that's just a, a, a switch that needs to be flipped. You know, lying in the sand, I know what side I'm going to stand on. Amen? I'm not wavering, not moving, not budging. I'm on the side with Christ. Amen? And this is simply what it comes down to, being able to stand on your faith and walk out your faith. Total obedience. 
Go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, quickly, if you will, please, church. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. We're going to read this. If we get on the wall, we're going to read this text out loud together. Romans chapter, thank you. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Read out loud together on the count of three. One, two, three, go. <clears throat> there it is. Faith comes through hearing and hearing through the word of who? Christ. Christ. And so my heart's prayer, my desire for you all is, is that, and even for myself as I stand here and teach the word, is that when we leave here together, our faith has been increased because of what we've heard. Amen? And we should not let it fall on deaf ears, but everything that we hear, everything that we see and receive here from the word of God today, we should take with us and say, how can this increase my faith in my own personal life? Amen? 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 And it should be exciting that we've come here today to sit under the teaching and the authority of God's word, and it can literally change us mentally, spiritually, and physically, praise God. So we should be excited about the opportunity that we're sitting under of the word and the authority and the power of God Almighty. Something interesting happens here. Because while Simon was washing his nets, and have you ever took, taken time to think about this? This is interesting. While Simon is washing his nets, he's listening to the teaching of the Lord. So in his flesh, Simon says, oh, Lord, We've been toiling all night, and we caught how much? But watch this, because this gets so good. Watch, listen, this gets so good. This is so blessed. But because he had been listening to the sermon from the Lord, faith comes from what? Hearing, Hearing through the word of who? In the same verse that he gives the excuse on the front end of verse 5, on the tail end, the back end of verse 5, he then says, but if you say so. I will do it. He had sat there and heard the teaching and the word of Christ. And when his flesh pulled one way, his spirit went another. You understand? Because faith comes from what? Hearing. He had faith to go back out and put the clean net in the water again because he heard the word of who? Christ and by hearing the word of Christ it increases your what faith so his flesh said I don't want to but the spirit said you just got charged up do what you've been told amen and so look at it again go back to Luke chapter 5 Remember, remember Romans 10, 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Now go to Luke chapter 5. If we can get uh, verse 5 back on the board, please. Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Now here it goes. Now that we understand faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, here we go. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night long and we took nothing, but at your word I will let down the what? Peter called Jesus something. What did, what, 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 what did he call him in verse 5? Master. He calls him Master. I, I want to tell you about this title, Master, because in the Greek text, when it's translated, it's very interesting. The word has a variety of meanings, but when it comes to Jesus, all speak of authority and power. It means literally Chief, commander, magistrate, governor, president of a college, all of those things is the meaning. But when it comes to the meaning of Jesus Christ, it's one in power and authority. That's our Lord. Amen? That's our Lord. So when you understand why Simon calls him master, on a morning where just the night before they called how much? No thing. That nothing, no thing, nothing, no thing. He looks at him and says, Master. In other words, he says, 
Master, you know what we did last night. and We got no thing. But Master, at your what? Word, I'm going to do as you told me to do. Because, Master, I know that you have all power. Master, I know that you have authority. And, Master, I'm going to be obedient to your word. Because I've just sat here, Master, and I've heard you teach a sermon. And now my faith is going to be put into practice. Amen? I mean, he would have been foolish. He'd have been foolish to receive the message and not put it into practice. But haven't we all been there before? Received the message and failed to put it into practice. Have, have, you, ever, have you ever gone home, maybe uh, left here and everything was great, warm and fuzzies, and then you go home and you argue with your spouse or you, you yell at your children and you think, ah, man, I didn't even last four hours. I was trying to do so good today. And, and maybe some really, really successful folks have gone two days, you know, three, four days. We're foolish to receive the message and not live it out. Because there's power in the word of God. Look at, look at Luke chapter 5, verse 6. Watch what takes place next. Luke chapter 5, verse 6. And when they had done this, they enclosed. So that, verse 5 says they let down the nets. Verse 6, and when they had done this, when they let down the nets, they enclosed a large number of fish. So enclosed, they pulled up, they trapped a large number of fish, and their nets were what? Now we know that when Jesus uh, is crucified and he comes back and he appears to his uh, apostles, uh, he, he appears to the apostles, and he's still standing on the shore. We know that their nets were beginning to break, okay? This is a whole other story for those that are maybe new in your faith walk, or I don't want you to get these two instances um, uh, confused. This is, this is when Jesus is first calling uh, some of the disciples, okay? So watch what takes place. Verse 6, and when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were what, church? Breaking and they signaled to their partners in the other boat. Remember in the beginning of the text it said that there were two boats. And so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to what church? Now I want you to listen here closely. There will always be fruit in your life when you do what God tells you to do. Hear that. And that doesn't always mean money. And that doesn't always mean warm and fuzzies. And that doesn't always mean happiness, does it? But there will always be godly fruit in your life when you walk in obedience to do what God calls you to do. You need to understand this. Listen to this. Listen to this, because I feel like someone's got to hear this. You don't have to be happy about being obedient. And I want you to make sense of that. That doesn't mean that doesn't give you a reason to be angry at God. Don't no no no. But had, l let me just put it down to a low to a lower level. When you were a child, do you remember doing what your daddy told you to do or your mama told you to do? You weren't happy about it, but you did it because you knew you needed to do it because the authoritative power told you to do it. And if you didn't do it, they could tear that tail up. So maybe you didn't get angry about it, but you were like, oh. I wanted to do something else, but fine, right? Fine, all right, fine. And maybe there's some times in your life where you've had to say that to God. All right, fine. Now, I'm going to share with you a testimony in my life, and I really hope that everyone receives this. And look, this, is, I'm, I'm, this is the full truth. When I was in high school and I just got my license, I had a really short little blue Toyota to sell, two doors. And uh, I had a really good friend at the time. Man, we were like brothers. And we had to make a decision one night. We were either going to go to my girlfriend's softball game or we were going to go to church. Seems like an easy decision, right? But we chose softball. You know, we were 
16 years old, man, and our, both of our girlfriends were playing softball. So we're like, church, softball, church, softball. We actually prayed together about what we should do. <laughs> this, this, this guy was a brother in the Lord with me. We were like brothers, man. It's a true story. We're, we're like brothers. And we were tight. We were tight, always together, man, always together. And we prayed about what to do. We came up with a conclusion that we wanted to go to the softball game. And so we actually prayed that the Lord would forgive us for doing wrong, and we hadn't even done it yet. We had rode across the parking lot, and everything was fine with the vehicle until we stopped and prayed and asked God what we should do, and we'd done opposite of what we knew we should do. And as I put my car in first gear and began to drive, it went doo, 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 doo. It's like, oh man, how'd I get a flat tire just sitting here? That thing's on the rim already. Listen, it was on the rim when moments later, there was nothing wrong. It was on the rim. I get out of my vehicle and I walk to the front. I'm just sitting there looking and a lady who can testify it to this day, if she remembers, uh, she was, she's still alive. She was walking past, and at the time, she worked for the school system. And she looked at me and she said, she said, boys, y'all ain't going nowhere looking like that. That, that car is sitting on the rim. And I said, yeah. I said, ma'am. I said, and she was a believer. I said, you know what really stinks about that is? She said, what? I said, we were supposed to go to church, but we chose not to and go to a softball game instead. And I said, that's the only reason that tire is flat on the rim like that. She said, well, you better call somebody for help. So I get back in the car with my friend, and I said, man, let's pray. And we had seen God do amazing things at, 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 at a young life. That's why it's so important to get into a good church that, that the hand of God is on. You understand? Because even at 16 years old, we believed that God could fix that tire. I'm telling you, at 16 years old, we believe that God could fix the tire. And maybe some of you are 60 in here, and, and, and you would have a hard time asking God to fix your tire because you think, well, it's just physical. God does spiritual. No, 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 God does spiritual. God does, he, he will heal something mentally. He will heal something physically, amen? If God can remove cancer, surely God can fix a tire. Let me just give you a praise report. Sister Pat's husband, uh, whose cancer started like this, uh, we've been praying for him, and now it was the size of his thumbnail. Uh, he went back to the oncologist, and they said it's even shrunk smaller than that. Praise God. Mm. Praise God. That was too weak. I mean, we're talking about seeing cancer disappear. Amen? I mean, just... Wow. So if, if we can believe God to heal cancer, and we've seen it already happen here, can I believe God to fix my tire? So we get in the car, and we pray, and we repented. First thing we did together was we repented. And the, the young man that was with me, he was also 16. He still lives in this county. He can testify to this. And the lady who was there still lives in this county. She can testify to this. We get in the car, we repent, and we, we, we truthfully tell God we're sorry for choosing someone over him. And I asked God, I said, God, if you'll fix my tire, I give you my word right now that we'll go straight to church. We prayed and we said, in Jesus' name and blood, amen. No joke. There's three of us there that could testify to it. I get out of the car and the tire is fixed. Do you want to know what I did at 16 years old? Got my butt to church. And maybe there's some people in here that's been believers for a long time, and you're still kind of like, well, I seriously doubt that happened. Where's your faith? Are you telling me that the God who created the universe from nothing is restricted at a tire? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Are you telling me that the God who raised Lazarus from the dead is restricted at an inner tube on a tire? I don't believe that. Are you telling me that the God that calls people in the New Testament to go from one place to the other place is restricted at inflating a tire? I don't believe that. I came home that evening, and my mom came outside in the driveway. Do you remember that? 
My mom came outside in the driveway, man, and I was just stoked. I said, Mom, my first miracle, my first miracle that I've seen God do for myself. I said, this is amazing. I said, that tire right there, that tire right there was on the rim. She comes over there, and she's just looking at it because she hadn't gotten back into church yet. So she's just over there, she's just looking at that tire. She said, really, it was on the rim? I'm like, Mom, I'm telling you, it was flat on the rim. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of what? Peter in his flesh said, no, Lord, we just cleaned that net. But then inside he said, I know what the right thing to do is, even if I don't understand why I'm doing it. Amen? Even if I can't explain it, I got to do what's right. Even, if, listen to that, because someone needs that. Even if I can't understand it, I've got to do what's right. And so there will always, there will always be fruit in our lives when we're obedient to God. Luke chapter 5 verse 8. Look at what the text says next. Praise the Lord. Luke 5 8. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Let me tell you what happens here. Peter just had his mind blown. You ever had that happen to you? Peter's just had his mind blown. Have, have you ever been there before church with God? Have you ever been there with God when your mind just gets blown? I mean, you can't wrap your mind around it. You just can't. When, when you see the hand of God in your life and his provision reminds you of just how good God is and, and just how unworthy we are. I mean, because that, that, that's exactly what happened with me in worship this morning. I couldn't even say any other word other than worthy, worthy, worthy. I couldn't get anything else out because uh, be that's the way I can describe it. When the Spirit comes upon me, it's just like a blanket. You could actually, you know, if someone had a blanket, just let it go on you, and you could feel the presence of the Lord rest on you. And, 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 and you just get overwhelmed, and you know, oh, God, you're so good to me, and I'm so undeserving of it. So undeserving of it. And this is what happens with Simon Peter right here. Simon says, Depart from me, Lord. Depart from me. I'm not worthy to be in your presence. Depart from me. But you want to know what's so beautiful about that? Jesus was still willing to be in his boat. And so even as I'm here on the front row on my knees feeling unworthy, and I'm raising my hands just, you know, saying, Worthy, Lord, worthy, worthy, worthy. And the Lord reminds me, and it's just that easy, of how your sins are forgiven from the east to the west. I'm so thankful that he's willing to be in my life. So thankful that he's willing to be on my boat. So blessed that he's willing to be on my boat in life. Immediately, Peter calls the other boat for help. They come over, and, and the nets are breaking, and they put, put a load in that boat. They put a load in his boat. And it says in, uh, in, in, the, in the text, it says that both boats are beginning to what? Both boats are beginning to sink. And, and, and Peter sees this and he says, oh man, look, two things have just blown his mind. He says, number one, in my flesh, I didn't want to do what you told me to do. But number two, listen to this, this is important. But number two, I did what you told me to do and I got fruit from it. Amen. When you do what God calls you to do. You may not see fruit immediately, but a seed planted will always produce fruit when it comes to obedience in a walk with the Lord. You understand that, church? You understand that, church? I mean, that's what good news. Peter realizes he's not even worthy to have Jesus in his boat, and Jesus is willing to remain in the boat. Look at the ninth verse. We're right here at the end. Luke chapter 5, verse 9, for he and all who were with him were what? Astonished. Everybody had their mind blown. These guys have been fishing all night. They've been fishing all night. And Jesus says, just go let down your net. They didn't have to work for it. For he, verse 9, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, 
Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be what, church? You will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left how much? Everything and followed Jesus. They left everything and they followed him. You reckon, you reckon that that increased their faith just a little bit? But listen to this, because this is so key. It all started because he heard the word of Christ. Faith comes through hearing. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, you got to hear it. Yeah. Faith comes from hearing. This is one of the importance of church. You come and you hear the word of Christ. You hear the word of God. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing through the word of Christ. And because Peter heard, he was able to say, Lord, I don't want you. I just clean my net. We ain't called nothing. But since you said so, since you said so, look at what it says at the end of verse 10 again. Do not be afraid, Jesus tells them. Do not be afraid. That's one thing that the psalm said this morning that Sister Anne Marie pointed out. That was a good word. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. So we're going we're gonna to begin to close where we opened up this morning. Maybe you got someone in life that you thought, I've been there, done that, fished that person, fished for that soul. They wanted nothing to do with it, didn't catch nothing. Uh, just, just a waste of time, total waste of time. No, 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 not as long as they're still living. Amen? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Their souls are weighing in the balance, friends, brothers and sisters. Listen, their souls are weighing in the balance. And as long as they're still living, we need to still be fishing. That takes faith. But you know what else it takes along with that faith? It takes a love for the individual. You need to love them so much that you're not willing to let them go into hell. That's why Jude says you snatch them from the flames. In other words, what does that mean? How can we snatch someone from the flames if they're not literally at the flames? What it's saying is no matter how close they are to walking into hell when they die, no, no, at the very last breath, if that's what it takes, you get them for the kingdom of God the very last breath. So this is a big deal when Jesus tells the disciples, he said, from now on, you're going to be catching men. In other words, what Jesus said in this is this, and this is beautiful, listen to this, this is, oh, you thought that was something? That's just fish. But in the same way I bought you fish, I'm going to bring forth souls. And from this day on, you could be catching and look at Hebrews chapter 11 quickly, please, before we pray. Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah, this is faith. I'd encourage you all when you go home, uh, before you go to sleep tonight, to read chapter 11. And uh, brother, brother in the sound room, I don't, I don't think I added verse 3, but, but I feel led to add that now. So if you want to pop verse 3 up there as well as 1 and 2, that's where we're going. But Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and the word of God says this. Now faith is the assurance of things what? All right, now everybody look up here for a moment. You can't always see what you hope for, can you? And so that takes faith. Amen? All right, look, look back down at it. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things what? How many people have some things that you want to be or maybe you are or you'll begin to pray for in your life? How many people have a need for something in your life, whether it's restoration of a relationship or whatever? Uh, how many of you have a need for something in your life that you can't see yet? I know I've got one that you can't see yet. You know what it's going to take to get that in there is faith. You're believing in God through Jesus Christ that what you've asked your heavenly father for in the name of Jesus that you're going to receive, be it the will of God. Amen? 
So look at what it says, verse 1 again. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things what? Not seen. Now what that means is, church, you can't be so easy to give up just because you don't see it yet. Amen? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the people of old receive their commendation. That's a big deal. It's, tell your neighbor it takes faith. Look at someone and say it takes faith. It takes faith, it takes faith, it takes faith, it takes faith, and that faith can only be in Jesus Christ. It takes faith, it takes faith, it takes faith. Really the, the best medicine we could ever have, amen? <laughs> the one thing that can fix everything. It takes faith, it takes faith, it takes faith, it takes faith. Verse 3, watch this. By faith, we understand. Now remember what verse 1 and 2 said. All right? 1 and 2 told us that we can't always see it. Remember? And that's faith. And then verse 3, watch what verse 3 says when you keep that in mind. Verse 3 says, by faith, All right. we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Even when you can't understand that, your faith in Christ says that God is in control. And maybe, maybe someone's here today and they're having a hard time digesting that. It just doesn't all make sense. If, if God is real, how did God get here? Very good question, isn't it? If God is real, how did God get here? If, how, did, how, did God, how did God do everything that he did? made it visible from things that were not there. You talk about power and authority. But even for the questions that you cannot answer, let me bring it down to a much simpler level. Why does God exist? How did God get here? Who is here? Who is here that made God? No, 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 no. Nobody made God. Let me just clear that air right there. Listen to this. Have you ever tasted something so good that you didn't understand how she made it. Have you ever had something so good you just couldn't, you know, what in the world is up in that? <laughs> ladies, raise your hand, ladies, if you've ever tried to get a recipe from someone and the woman ain't sharing it. All right? Hold it up high. Hold it up high. Look around the room. Look around the room. All right, hands down. If, if, if we cannot explain the recipe, let me, this is how simple it is. I, I'm going to share with you how simple to reach someone who argues how do you, who is here for God. No, no, no. This is how easy it is. Bring it down to their level. Give them something that they can chew on. You understand? Give them a thought that they can understand, that, 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 that they can't debate. Listen to this. If you, can, if you can believe that what you're eating is real and you can't explain what's in it, and you've got faith to understand that what you just put in your mouth is reality, then how much more should we be able to get a grip on the things of God and be okay in our spirit to say, I don't know what's in it, but I know the chef created it. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes we can get so lost in the spiritual because we think so simple in the physical. That if we could just understand that, yes, maybe it really is just that easy to understand that my faith just needs to be in God, and that's enough. Amen? And that's totally enough. And so, real quickly, before we leave, look at it again, verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old receive their commendation, and by faith we understand that the universe, okay, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of who? so that what is seen was not made out of things that are what? Visible. Let's stand and pray. Father, we come before you in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. Today we've continued to look in your scripture. We begin to talk still about things in our life that even when they don't make sense, even when it doesn't make sense, well, we still have to believe in what we're hoping for. 
We still have to follow and be obedient to that conviction for the things unseen. We've still got to be willing to stand in the gap for loved ones, for family, for friends, for co-workers that have not yet received Christ as Lord and Savior. And that's our job to be the ambassadors of Jesus and to proclaim the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That's where the power is, where the power of God is. So, Father, I pray that we would be excited about casting our nets again. That we'd be walking in joy, new joy this morning that you have made and that, that you have offered to us new joy, fresh joy as your scripture calls it. And Father, I pray that we would once again be joyful about casting our net to our sister, to our brother, to our mother, to our dad, to our aunt, to our uncle, to our cousin, to a family friend who's like family, to a, to a boss, to a coworker, to a neighbor, to someone that has become a silent enemy, to someone whose hearts have become divided between you and them and, and maybe hardened. just want to share with you if that's the case and it's become an enemy that's a sin that's a sin and God is calling you out of that this morning but I pray that we would be refreshed about casting that net even if we've cast it a thousand times before father I pray that our faith would be in you through Jesus Christ believing that this time this time when we cast the net that this time it would be full and for the souls that we've been praying for, that the harvest would be ready and that we would see fruit from our actions of obedience. If you're here today and you've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life, I've got good news for you. The Spirit of God is here. He's everywhere. But the good news is, is that the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ and he died for you. He died for you. You may argue with that and say, I don't deserve him, man. I've, I've run away. I've, I've been horrible. I've been terrible. I've, I've, I've not been worthy. I've not been good. I've not been clean. I've, I've been terrible. I did everything opposite of what everyone told me to do. Well, the good news is he still did it for you. And that's why he did it. Because he knew that without him, it would be impossible. So today, if you're ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right where you're at, I invite you to just raise your hand. It would be an honor to be able to lead you through a prayer. The Bible says if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So today, you're ready for that if you're ready to receive Christ as Lord in your life and surrender raise your hand right where you are and submit to the one living true God best decision friends you'll ever make